Oh, it's wait a moment. Oh, uh, I think you can hear me now. I think it's working well now. Uh, please leave comments if you can't hear our voice or see video. Uh, thank you for your comment. Okay, let's start. Uh, let me introduce myself first. I'm Yue Aibihara, working in Starburst Data, and I'm a maintainer and contributor to Torino, formerly PressSQL. If you are not familiar with the rebranding, I hope you will read the blog that exists in the banner of the Torino.io website. Uh, today, we have two sessions from Toja Data and NTT Communications. I'm very excited to see the Torino usage. Uh, in the past two years, uh, we invited more companies as a long event in a day, but we are going to split into short several events so that more people can join the event easily. Okay. If you want to talk in upcoming meetup, please feel free to send message to us in Zeta or Slack. And also we decided to talk in English because in the last year, Japanese Torino users in APAC suggested using English to reach out to more Torino users. Uh, when you want to ask questions about presentation, please tweet with Torino Daily hashtag or leave comments in YouTube. Uh, let me repeat this introduction in Japanese. と、冒頭だけ日本語で少し話します。えっと、スターバーストでソフトウェアエンジニアとして働いているリハラと申します。えっと、今回ストレステスケールからトリエのトリノへのリブラウンドを年度としてはもう少し深いイベントを行ったんですが、今回から1回あたりのイベントを短くして年に複数回開催していく予定です。もし登壇に興味のある方はツイッターやスラックでコメントをお願いします。またイベントの最中に質問がある方はツイッターで
uh, sorry, let me, sorry for that, okay. Can you hear me? Okay, great, thank you very much. Sorry, my, my YouTube was a little bit delayed, so. Let me get started. And uh, at first, I'm sorry uh, if my daughters interrupt me sometime. They they just coming back from uh, their press school. So anyway, let me. And today, I would like to talk about a case study from Tonja Data about Torino. Uh, I will I will explain our service later, but uh, we run uh, Torino as a part of our sheet customer data platform functionality. And then our customer can use uh, Torino via our interface. So I will talk about our services and how our customer uses Torino on our platform and what kind of uh, usage we can see. And I would like to share it with you. Uh, if I'm, I hope it helps you to get some insight about like a Torino usage when you start providing Torino to your end users or internal users on your platform. And uh, uh, and also, I let me uh, introduce myself a bit. Uh, I'm Toru Takahashi. I've been working in Torino Data for over eight years, and I was uh, first technical support engineer for global support team, and uh, I. We, we started to launch Torino and pressed to into our services in, in 2000, 2015. And uh, I'm, I have been working with uh, Torino uh, to support our customer over five years. So my presentation is, is coming from my, exp uh, my experience to support our Torino. And as a disclaimer, uh, Treasure Data still uses uh, Treasure Data uses Torino 317 and 350, but uh, we still keep using Prest as our terminology for backward compatibility because uh, our system APIs uses still uh, Prest as a keyword. Changing it is very painful for us and for from customer point of view. So in the presentation, I may say pressed or Torino mixed sometime because I'm used to say to pressed still. So I'm trying to be used to use Torino uh, day by day. And this is my Twitter account. Uh, Twitter account is this and GitHub account this. If you have any question about presentation or Torino data or anything, feel free to reach out to me via Twitter or something. And today's talk, I will talk about case study about our customer's Torino usage as use of customer data platform. And I hope it gives some insight if you start providing Torino to your internal and external end users. And uh, I will not talk about detail of our implementation with Torino into our service. And I don't talk about things about like a Torino configuration on our environment, optimization, such a things. And I'll give a quick introduction about Torreja Data CDP. That is our SaaS services. And this picture describes our overall architecture of our data uh, platform side. And we provide, as a Treasure Data CVP, we provide the leading customer data platform for enterprise customer who need to manage customer data at massive scale to create that single customer view that can be used by marketing, sales, customer service, and other organizations to create a more seamless customer journey. In order to build this CDP platform, we pass we passionate to make and contribute OSS. For example, our ingestion system to acquire data from external services uses uh, FluentD and FluentBit and Embark. That is that uh, our 
our original OSS product. And also, we store data after ingestion is managed by PlasmaDB. That is a closed uh, software for as our database. PlasmaDB is consists of S3 and PostgreSQL for metadata management. And this data on PlasmaDB is compressed by message pack format. And currently we hand, we store over 100 trillion records in our platform. And customer can access to this data by using Torino or Hive or Spark. These distributed data processing, these distributed SQL engines currently processed uh, 1 billion rows every second. So now like, like now 1 billion, 1 billion, 1 billion every second our Prest and Hype and Spark uh, processed one trillion records. And also customer can manage uh, job dependency scheduling by using Degdag. That is also another our uh, workflow management system. And this Degdag can like uh, manage job dependency with Torino and Hive and uh, ingestion. Et cetera. And top on this data platform, we have marketing application for marketer and a call center application and some others. So not only data engineer, but also other like uh, persona, such as marketer, sales, call center agent can also use CD customer data platform with this data platform through some like uh, industry specific applications. And uh, yeah, this is our sample of our architecture. So how, our, how can our customer use Torino on our platform? Currently we, pro we provide two interfaces. One is SQL editor, another one is segment builder. SQL data is really a simple one. You can write a SQL, Torino SQL, uh, Hive SQL on our web UI, and then they can submit the uh, query, log any query uh, through this interface. And also we provide a segment builder to marketers who are not familiar with SQL. In this UI, customer can uh, make uh, some condition without SQL. Like uh, if you want to get a list of user who lives in Tokyo or APAC anywhere, anywhere, they can make such a condition on GUI. And then the segment builder internally uh, generate a pressed uh, Torino SQL internally and then submit it uh, behind of uh, uh, this UI and then retrieve data through Torino and then show the results. So I will share some usage of our Torino, Torino but this usage come from these, uh, the usage come from uh, these uh, queries that were submitted from these interfaces. And this is a simple our stats about Torino usage. Currently, uh, our customer execute 2.8 billion queries in the last year. This is a number of unique query ID. And uh, in this year, we expect uh, uh, 3.5 billion query. Uh, sorry, not billion, I'm sorry. Uh, so in the last year, our customer executed two, two, 280 million queries. And then in this year, we expect uh, 350 million queries in this year. It means roughly 1 million queries per day were, uh, is executed by our customer right now. And then we, our Torino handles such a queries, number of queries every day. And uh, currently we have uh, over 
50,000 users in our platform. And then they, they, some of them uses every day, some of them sometime, and sometimes some of them are like a system user or some such things. So let's see some interesting usage. So this is a maybe common feature. Customer can configure a scheduled query to run a query automatically on specific time. If you use this Torino or any BI2, you, will, you may have seen this feature. In our platform, we provide this UI, like you can configure a daily job, uh, hourly job or coulon job, coulon schedule for Torino. And another example is Redash. Redash also has a refresh schedule feature. They can submit uh, specific, uh, they can refresh data source with certain time frames. This is a common feature for data platform or query engines. And then once you provide this feature to your end user, what will happen? Here is the result. Uh, this graph describe uh, uh, rate of scheduled times, minute value. Uh, X axis indicates what minute is configured in an hour, and Y axis indicates a rate of scheduled times, minute value. Um, for example, if you configure uh, like a Torino query to run uh, like a 2 p.m. 30, then the schedule query is populated in this bar. If you configure a schedule on 2 p.m., then it will be populated this bar. So in our, on our platform, 45% of scheduled query run on 00, 00 minutes exactly, because user allows daily, hourly, every 30 minutes, even they have they can configure some delay, they don't do it. Just they can set certain time, like they want to run 0, p, 0 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m. And this is really pain for, from cluster management point of view, because every exact, like uh, exactly, exact every hour, you can see some peak, and then you can see like uh, some other time frame have a lot of like, a, like a, any query uh, not executed in some time frame. Surely customer have also ad hoc queries, so but the scheduling is scheduled time trend is something like that. And uh, at the beginning of our service, we had expected multi-tenancy helps this distribution of job execution. However, customer's location is tightly associated with the data location. So they, we currently run uh, our service on US and Japan and Korea and uh, UK, and not UK, sorry, uh, EU. Then Japan customer submit a daily job, 00 a.m. US customer submit 00 a.m. Then each Torino cluster peak time is adjusted the certain time. So it cluster always need to adjust the daily peak or hourly peak workload because one hour is a little bit too short for auto scaling, especially uh, scaling down. So if you provide Torino with a scheduling feature to end the user, you will see similar uh, trend in your platform. Just uh, one example, example solution I've seen before. Uh, like uh, in our platform, we couldn't provide this feature, but the Google C trigger function is uh, nice from system work point, workload point of view user can specific a certain period, not a specific time. Like they can trigger uh, their 
Google Sheet script on this time frame, but they can't specify like a 00, 00 p.m., 1 p.m., something like that. But generally speaking, providing this feature to enterprise customized challenges. So if you think about to provide some scheduling feature to end user, not end user, internal user, this option might be helpful, but uh, to end user, like uh, you need to prepare this workload for your Torino cluster. Another metrics uh, is query execution time. On our platform, 99% queries completed within 10 minutes. And uh, however, 0.005% queries, it means 100 queries per day, run over two, two hours. These long running jobs are critical for cluster stability from our service point of view. And Polino has uh, some restriction for running job, ex query execution time, but at the beginning we had 20, we, we set it as 24 hours query execution, execution time. Then we noticed it was too long. So we have changes it to four hours right now, but uh, still we have seen like uh, over like, uh, long running query that run over two hours. This makes us uh, like, a, this is really uh, like a challenging for us to rotate a cluster because imagine if you run four hour job, like a, a job that will complete four hours, but we rotate a Torino cluster like a, when they are completed like a three hours processing, then the job will be retried or they need to rerun the job again. Then it is a, something like an incident from customer point of view because they expect it will be completed four hours, but due to a cluster rotation, uh, it will it is needed to re-execute and then it will complete like eight hours. So something like this type of issue happen if you allow to run long running job. And uh, we currently, even though we restrict query execution time for four hours, it's always challenges. We need to like a JP engineer, Japan engineers, uh, Jap engineers in Japan need to start cluster rotation uh, like uh, in the morning because they need to, if you start it in the evening, you need to keep waking, working in the night until all job is completed in the cluster. So this type of uh, uh, issue happen when you are out to long running job. So if you provide to train to your end user, Think about the query, max query execution time. That's a very important uh, limit from end user point of view and from operation point of view. Uh, another good interesting usage is text length, SQL text length. So you know, our, our customer can write any query manually and 96% of queries lengths are less than 10,000 characters, but 0.1% uh, it means 100 queries per day have uh, over 1 million characters. Imagine your SQL have uh, like one megabyte and then it is sent to Torino. <laughs> this is a little bit crazy and when we check what kind of SQL they wrote, it has like a, their fair clause is so long. They have a huge number of uh, element in, in clauses, in condition, or uh, they have a huge number of union or like a 
or statement it says almost safe same but uh, due to lack of knowledge about sql they do like a copy and paste copy and paste copy and paste such as things happen then it exceeds like a one megabyte or more and then it is like a turning of it's like just passing text takes like a over like a one uh, one minute by Torino. So we needed to also set a limit of query text size. So this is also like a, I from engineering point of view, it's it's understandable why customers submit such a query, but it happened. So you also need to think about that such a limitation for query text size, query text length. And also, uh, as a, uh, also we also uh, struggle to measure pressed que uh, Torino query cost. In our platform, we don't uh, build, uh, we don't build uh, like a query itself. So customer can submit anytime they can sub, they can, even though they do full scan query, we don't build it like that. Like a, it's unlikely to uh, be query and other platform. But uh, even though we don't build a uh, query, it's important to understand how much money we are spending for processing individual Torino queries. Even if we our pricing doesn't build a query processing. So we internally calculate uh, individual Torino queries by uh, metrics from machine hour usage of individual queries, like uh, such as CPU, memory spreads, and network, and uh, S3 get cost, and some others. It helps us to motivate to improve customer query by like uh, education and suggestion and some others. In fact, uh, we have, by using such a query cost data, we have some improvements of our customer queries. Like uh, in our Plasma DB, we manage data on S3 and then data is partitioned by time data. Like uh, when customer imports data or uh, when customer generate a table, they need to specific uh, key condition that is time-based data. And then our storage automatically passion data by one hour range or daily lenses. And, but un unfortunately, our product doesn't uh, offer a lot of capability to manage partitioning information to customer. So customer couldn't manage partition uh, by themselves. So we need to uh, manage customer partition information. However, we can't regularly demerge data, fragmented data due to a uh, massive data volume. So we sometimes uh, scan customer fragmented S3 partition data in order to optimize it by repartitioning. And uh, also fragmented S3 partition was quite expensive in terms of the S3 get cost. So by using, uh, by using query cost data, we identify which fragmented data is uh, often accessed by BAT query. And then we, for, we prioritize the partitioning target by using such a uh, access trend. This is one example. Uh, red bar indicates the number of queries. Blue graph uh, indicates uh, cost of the query. So after we, uh, even though uh, red graph, red bar is stable, number of jobs trend is stable, once we optimize partitioning, uh, S3 partition information, uh, sorry. Once we optimize our partitioning on the table, 
that accessed by this query significantly improve the costs of uh, queries. So this type of uh, work is necessary if you provide uh, Torino to your end user because customer usually don't care about uh, detail of partition and et cetera. So we need to optimize it automatically in order to uh, reduce uh, cost of queries and uh, also, it will help to optimize query performance, et cetera. In addition, we recently uh, improved S3 access stability. Due to a historical reason, we use this, uh, when Torino access to our S3 associated with PlasmaDB, uses uh, all the pass style request like this, S3 dot amazon aws.com and bucket name and then we change it we switch to the virtual hosted s3 request style like this according to aws it enables various internal optimization for managing the s3 traffic even though tiny change of dns it significantly improved in fact we have observed that s3 get requests it like rate is significantly uh, reduced from 0.344% to 0.023% for reading partitioning on S3. This means we have saved 22 million wasted S3 get count requests among the total six plus billion requests per day in our biggest region, biggest Torino cluster. So as you may know, S3 get request cost in AWS is this, like 1,000 requests cost is 0.0004 dollar. This is small, but uh, since we, we send a request six plus billion per day, reducing 0.3% is significantly uh, cost saving. Like, uh, I think we saved 10K dollar per year. So if you use it, still use this old pass style, and we recommend to change to virtual hosted S3 request style. And this is the last slide. Uh, so I don't talk about uh, Torino in detail, but uh, from as a provider of service with Torino, user will do things beyond your worst expectations. And uh, S even though SQL is one of the popular and common uh, interface to access data, but people don't know how to write query uh, efficiently yet. So you need to expect right, uh, beyond your worst expectation. That's very important. And also in allowing insufficient queries will be a huge pain from operation point of view and cost point of view with Torino. So in especially in B2B business point of view, to restrict to strict a limit from like allowing anything at the beginning is problem because it's difficult to this historic a limit from the beginning is difficult than to relax a limit later. At, at later, so my recommendation is to establish historic limit at the first at first, and then relaxing the limit gradually when you consider to provide SQL engine to your end users. And that's it. Thank you very much for listening today. And uh, we are Treasure Data is hiring a lot of people in Japan, US, UK, and Canada. Feel free to, uh, if you have an interest, please reach out to me and please access to this space. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your helpful presentation. Uh, there's a question from Akash. How do we change the limit of query text in Torino? Do you remember uh, that? 
I think uh, we have a uh, we doesn't allow uh, we doesn't allow customer to directly access Torino in our platform, and uh, we provide an API to submit a SQL to Torino. So the API uh, restricts uh, query size, text size, uh, in front of Torino. Let's see. And I have two questions. Uh, does Torija data provide training courses about query training or something? Uh, yes, we have, but uh, it doesn't like uh, focus on only Torino. Like uh, we don't educate Torino architecture or such things, but uh, we provide a general SQL uh, optimization tips, like uh, using partitioning key or in condition and something like that. I see, looks useful. And another question is, when Twitter data customers have question about query training or uh, the way to build complex SQL, uh, can the support team help it? Yeah, we do a lot. We have <laughs> tuning a lot of query. <laughs> So yeah, actually we see a lot of 1 million character queries. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't open the query on UI. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> such a things happen sometimes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so it looks there is no other question in Twitter and YouTube. So, okay, thank you for your presentation and answering questions. Thank you. Um, let's move to the next session. Okay, the next speaker is Akash Nand in NTT Communications. Maybe switch. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Ibiara san. Uh, let me share the screen and get started. Okay. So, am I am I audible and am I visible? Uh, is the screen visible? today. My name is Akashnan and uh, I'm working as a software engineer in data science team at Entity Communications. Uh, today I would like to uh, share with you in how Entity Communication is using Trino and what are the challenges and solutions that we implemented, uh, especially for security uh, uh, around security and authorization. So let me introduce you Entity Communications first. Uh, Entity.com is Japan's largest network service provider. Uh, we provide ICT services to uh, almost 88% Fortune 500 companies. Uh, we have network reachability over 190 countries. And combined with Entity, Entity subsidiaries such as Entity.com and Entity Locomo and Entity Limited, we are the fourth largest telecommunication service provider in the world. So given these numbers, uh, Entity.com uh, is, is a data-driven company. And recently, we are uh, using uh, Presto, SQL, and Trino uh, for our data analysis. So uh, it all started with uh, Presto DB in 2016. So we, uh, uh, we have two phases from 2016 to 2019. We were using Presto DB. And, uh, uh, Presto DB and in the end of 2018, we kind of 2017, we kind of switched to Presto SQL. Uh, in the beginning, we were not we were not uh, clear about uh, the forks and the versions, but later we decided, given the development and active community around Presto SQL, we decided to switch to Presto SQL. Uh, 
uh, around 2016 uh, our main use case was uh, using presto uh, for query analysis and network traffic data and our team was a uh, small team around 10 people 10 analyst uh, members but in 2020 uh, entitycom uh, decided to create a new data analysis team and uh, fortunately at the same time uh, around the end of 2020 presto sql was rebranded to trino so it was a very fortunate coincidence for us to migrate to the new data environment although that brought a uh, new security challenges and complexities which i'm going to highlight today so uh, this is uh, trino in numbers at entitycom for uh, nine months from this year from february 2021 to november uh, we have roughly 50 plus active users uh, for uh, almost 500,000 queries are executed uh, we are analyzing data from over 18 different data sources uh, roughly 2200 queries are executed per day and we have processed almost 21 terabytes of data so uh, i i have been working in the same team from like last four years and i have seen the tremendous growth mainly in this 2020 to 2021 after the new uh, data analysis team was formed within entitycom and i expect this growth to be continue in future years so let me introduce you to the challenges uh, first of all let's understand the architecture that we are using so uh, our main requirement was to use uh, trino for uh, let me put the laser yeah so our main requirement was to use uh, users from active directory as a user base and uh, uh, it was kind of difficult to configure trino with directly with active directory because uh authentication trino authentication works mostly with ldap s or oauth or some other authentication methods so to achieve this what we have done is we have configured azure active directory as azure domain services and if we use adds this that is azure ad domain service it provides us a virtual ldap kind of a gateway for accessing Azure Actory, Active Directory through LDAP protocol. So uh, it, it in the backend, it still uses Active Directory protocol, but you can use this gateway as a LDAP S, which then can be used with Trino and Apache Ranger for further configurations. So as you can see here for authentication, we are using uh, LDAP S and uh, for authorization, we are using Apache Ranger uh, which is using same LDAP S uh, as a user base. So that is how our lot of users and complex groups are mapped to this Active Directory. And that is how we are using Trino for entire uh, user base in our company. And uh, we have deployed Trino in Kubernetes for easy scale up and scale down in future. And uh, on the right side, as you can see, we are, uh, we are using uh, many catalogs, but the technology uh, RDB uh, database technologies that are mainly used are Hive, Postgres, Oracle, MySQL, and SQL Server. On the left side, we have many clients. Uh, for example, Trino CLI is being used by uh, our analyst team daily for quick uh, execution of queries or to get a peek in the data. Uh, we are using Apache Airflow and uh, GitLab CI CD for daily configurations of our data pipeline. Uh, we are also using Tableau, uh, DBWR, and Yanagishima for uh, Yanagishima for our uh, data visualization and creating graphs, along with Jupyter and R Studio. And recently, we are also trying DBT for data modeling. So, uh, in 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 the client side, our latest addition to this client uh, stack was Apache Airflow and DBT. We are yet to explore all the features uh, of Airflow and DBT with Trino. And we, we hope to come up with some good results in future. So now that we have understood the architecture, uh, let me uh, take you to the exact precise uh, challenges that we faced. So the first challenge where, uh, while integrating Apache uh, Ranger and Trino was that uh, after rebranding, uh, the Apache Ranger plugin called Presto Ranger plugin was still using the old package name 
uh, and the references were still pointing to io.prestosql. So we kind of redeveloped the existing Presto Ranger plugin uh, and renamed it to the Trino Ranger plugin. Uh, so that is how we solved the Apache Ranger uh, plugin problem. But only changing and configuring that plugin is not enough. Uh, our Azure Active Directory uh, contains a lot of groups uh, and a lot of members, a lot of users. So to sync those users with Hadoop, we have to change the Hadoop security group mapping to LDAP group mapping. Usually, this is the step many of the developers forget to change, and that is how, and that is why Trino policies may not work. And uh, most of the developers think that this is the problem on the Trino side, but it is not the Trino's problem. It is the problem of Hadoop side, because uh, when when you execute a query, uh, Ranger policies are evaluated against the Hadoop groups and not the end users uh, or like not the Trino groups. So once you configure this setting in core site XML of Hadoop, you can confirm if this is working by executing such command. It will it will give you the exact group membership of this username, and that is how you can confirm if LDAP groups are configured correctly. After doing this, we also found out that we have to add Ranger use uh, user group information equal true in access control properties uh, on the Trino side. This setting is important on Trino side, otherwise Trino will never know which groups to use. So once you add this, Trino will use HDFS group mapping, uh, which we which we enabled in the first point here. The next challenge was uh, self-signed certificate SSL errors. Uh, actually, Trino does not recommend to use self-signed certificate as much as possible. Uh, and uh, I also experienced the same thing. Uh, if if you are using self-signed certificate, we have to you have to ensure that the certificates are trusted in JVM Trust Store to make uh, to to make SSL work. So uh, in our case, it was it was a requirement that we had to use self-signed certificate because we are using ADDS. So uh, we we kind of collected all this uh, self signed certificate and added to JVM Trust Store manually, and that is how we ensured that these SSL errors are solved using uh, trust by adding certificates to JVM Trust Store. Uh, one more challenge was there is a very uh, uh, the 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 documentation on Trino Ranger plugin is not so uh, well written. Uh, and the resources around how to use Presto, Trino, and Ranger are, are not that much available on the internet as well. So having understood the pain of integrating all of these technologies, uh, uh, I, have con uh, I have contributed, uh, I have created this blog uh, where you can, where you can uh, see how to integrate Apache, Ranger, and Trino. So, in this blog, uh, I have explained all the uh, uh, all the uh, concepts of Apache Ranger admin, what is Ranger audit, Trino, and how Trino Ranger plugin is used. So to give you a quick understanding, so this is the architecture of Trino Ranger and uh, Trino Apache Ranger and the plugin. So the Ranger Trino Ranger plugin sits inside the Trino box. Or, or, or it is it is running on the Trino side. So, uh, and the audit logs are sent to Elasticsearch or uh, or you can configure Apache Solar as well. So once the user sends query to Trino, uh, the audit log is sent to Elasticsearch and then uh, the latest uh, policies are downloaded from Ranger UI to the Trino side. And uh, using those policies, then Trino determines if the user have access or not. So uh, this is how the plugin works. And uh, I, I myself found it very difficult to understand the working of Trino Ranger plugin and how things work behind the curtain. But I hope this diagram is useful for anyone who want to get started with Ranger and Trino. So uh, this tutorial not only explains the concept, but it also covers the hands-on tutorial. So. Uh, you can use this uh, GitHub repository uh, where I have uh, uh, created a Docker image and then you can execute 
and get started and you can understand how Trino and Ranger works. So the next challenge for us was to uh, configure Trino Ranger in Docker Kubernetes environment. So uh, that the, this is because uh, in, in Trino, the plugin directory path uh, is different for Docker uh, environment and non-Docker deployment. So in, in Ranger setup, uh, there is a shell script called enable Trino Ranger plugin, uh, which, which enables the uh, Trino Ranger uh, plugin on the Trino side. So we had to add some customization on top of that script to make it work for Docker environment. So to quickly give you an overview of that patch, let me go back to GitHub again. So uh, as you can see, we have kind of added some custom properties uh, about installment environment and then plugin directory path. Uh, you, can, you can use these variables in install.properties file, uh, which then can be used uh, by the script to correctly configure uh, the plugin path. And uh, uh, that will, uh, as you can see here in for the docker environment we are using different install directory and configuration directory so this uh, this customization helped us in using deploying uh, trino on docker so apart from this uh, we face some different challenges not only on the security but on on memory and log and other connector so among that, uh, in the beginning, uh, we faced memory issues because of the queries that were coming and our users started doing heavy analysis, ex ex started executing heavy queries. So at that time, I found out that uh, tr Presto training series covered by uh, creators of Trino such as Dan Martin was very helpful. And especially a performance tuning uh, session was really helpful for me to solve this problem. Uh, for for better log analysis from this year we uh, we have developed the custom query logger uh, using event listener uh, uh, which which sends queries log to kafka as well for real time analysis uh, this has helped us in analyzing how our cluster is growing and how are the memory uh, how is memory being used for various connectors uh, in one of our system, RDBMS system, uh, one of our client side database is using IBM Netiza. Uh, so we have developed custom uh, connector for IBM Netiza as well. Uh, we have already open sourced this connector, uh, but it is yet to be get merged into Trino. So uh, if you if you are interested to use this connector, please let me know. I can I can share the link for it as well. Uh, I would like to highlight that during all of this challenges and journey, Trino community has been really helpful. Uh, and as you can see from screenshot, a uh, uh, few members from the community were voluntarily helping us in solving this problem. Uh, we kind of found out some bugs. Uh, we kind of fixed some bugs. Uh, there, were, there, are, there are certain things that are still unfixed but uh, the role uh, from the the community has played a very good role and i have i have found out that uh, asking question on slack uh, or trino for, forum uh, can be really helpful to solve any uh, any issues uh, hope uh, if you ask question on trino slack someone will definitely get back to you and will help you uh, again uh, once once uh, this is again one more example where uh, once I have understood the bug, I was kind of sharing back again with some other members who were also facing similar issues. So uh, I would like to highlight that uh, Trino community uh, Slack channel and Trino forum was really helpful uh, to solve to solve uh, any of the Trino related problem. Having understood this pain and uh, as a, as a give back from my side, I contributed this blog and shared with the community within Trino Slack as well, as well as on Trino uh, forum. Uh, and soon this blog will be also merged on Trino blog site so that everyone can uh, can use Apache Ranger and Trino. So uh, if, you, if, you, if you ever want to get help, uh, I would highly recommend you to join these two. Uh, uh, I would highly recommend you to join these two platforms. One is Trino forum, which was recently launched. Uh, where you can ask question, you can find 
already answered questions and you can also use Trino Slack uh, and there are many other channels where you can get help. So uh, in, in future, uh, we would like to focus on improved uh, query logging. For example, right now we are using query logs only for analyzing how our cluster is growing and how uh, our catalogs are performing but we would like to improve that logging method and maybe use query logs for more detailed analysis uh, as to query optimization and what type of query should be planned and when should be planned. Uh, so for that thing, we are also planning to uh, uh, strengthen our understanding skills about query plan, query optimization. Uh, maybe using a Presto training series can be a good start for this. Uh, currently, we have we have deployed Trino on Kubernetes. The downtime for uh, if we, if we have to do any maintenance on Trino, uh, the current downtime is approximately around two to three minutes. But as as our usage uh, of Trino becomes more critical, uh, it is very important to make that downtime to zero. So uh, we are planning to use Presto Trino Gateway in future. Uh, which can be really helpful and act as a load balancer if you have multiple clusters uh, of Trino running. So, uh, and recently uh, we have started using uh, Apache Airflow, Trino, and DBT for data ingestion. So we are yet to see how how these things uh, can how these systems can perform in terms of uh, st stability and performance for ingestion of large data. So looking forward to those results. So the references that I mentioned in this uh, slides uh, uh, are here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to share these slides again in the community channels as well. So feel free to use those references. And uh, if you have any question, please feel free to ask on Slack channel. I would, I would be happy to answer any of the questions that you may have right now as well. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I guess it is a uh, first public talk about Torino from NTT communications. Is it right? Sorry, uh, can you can you repeat the question? Uh, I guess it is a first public talk from uh, about Torino from NTT communications. Is it yeah. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. This is the first one. Okay. Uh, and I think Apache Ranger is widely used all over the world, but uh, users report uh, don't exist so much, in my opinion. Yeah. So your presentation looks pretty helpful to many Torin and Ranger users. Thank you so much. Um, let me ask one question. Uh, if I remember correctly, we cannot reduce Ranger policies between Torino and Hive. I mean, we need to register duplicated policies for Hive and Torino in Ranger. Is it right? Yeah. So in Ranger, uh, we we have to create two different services, one for Torino and one for Hive. Although they kind of share similar structure, but those policies are different. So you have to configure policies differently, even though they can look similar. For example, in Hive, there is no concept of catalog. In Trino, we have catalog, but in Hive, there is no such thing as catalog. So this, that kind of difference is still there. So you have to configure policies differently. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let me add Torsan to stream again. Okay. Okay, so I think it was, oh, okay. Uh, thank you for your presentations and joining the meetup today. Uh, I hope all attendees enjoyed our sessions. Uh, in the next event, we are planning to invite one of the Torino creators and uh, 
developer advocate of Torino. So please wait the announce in meetup.com. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, see you next year. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. bye.